Hey everybody, how you doing? Doug Berry here, Battery Coalition. Good to have you here. Nice. People joining in, people jumping in the room right now. Good to have you out there. All right, we are announcing uh, that we are doing something next week, a workshop. Let me adjust something here. Give me just a second. All right. All right it's never enough. Just get these things just right. So, yes, next week, uh, workshop, and wanted to talk a little bit about that. Before we get to that point, hey, guess what? There's a lot happening in the world right now, and we want to make sure that we put everything in the right perspective. And it's important to understand that in the, you know, in the scope of everything going on, we play a part in being better prepared spiritually and physically when it comes to seeing world events unfolding all around us. Oh, we got people jumping in right here. This is great. Let's see here. We got Karen checking in from North Carolina. Howdy, Karen. Good to have you there. Hello from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. We got Milwaukee, also in Wisconsin. Catherine. Uh, let's see. Greetings, Doug family and team. God bless you for your encouragement. Love and all you do. Texting from Tucson, Arizona. Nice. Good to hear from you, Mary, in Tucson, Arizona. Or as I like to say, Tucson, Arizona. That's not the right way to pronounce it, though. Catherine from New Jersey. All right. What exit? I know that's what you got to say when you talk about New Jersey. Uh, Temecula, California. Esmeralda. Good to have you on there. Trisha from Richmond, Virginia. And Mary from Nebraska. And Oh, New Hampshire. Dover, New Hampshire just chimed in. Donna. Good to hear from you all. And as you continue to jump in the room and chime in, this is, again, one of those last-minute lives. We just sent an email out saying that we were going to be doing this live. And the reason we want to do this is, again, just to kind of throw out to you uh, some key things to be thinking about and also announce that next week we've got a great workshop coming up. It's a free workshop. If you've not signed up for it yet, you can. Go out to brcoalition.com forward slash workshop. You see that in the link at the top here. And get yourself signed up for it. Again, it's free. We had originally planned to do one day, Tuesday, May 17th. We had two workshops set up at 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock, but the numbers really grew. We're close to 6,000 people who've signed up for these workshops now. So there is a little bit of room left on the May uh, 18th, Wednesday, May 18th workshop, so you can check it out. Uh, again, this is the sort of thing that it's so important because we're going to be talking about things that we need to be doing to deal, especially with the food shortages and other shortages that are happening and that are getting worse. And we want to look at the things that are happening in the world right now. You may have heard the reports, I'm sure many of you have by now, that there's even a shortage of baby formula going on in the world. That's scary, obviously, for many reasons. And then we hear the report yesterday just comes out that down on the border, which our government has done such a great job securing, down on the border they found pallets full of baby formula for the illegals coming over the border and other supplies as well. So we're in a very difficult time right now for many, many reasons. And why the shortage of formula? There are different uh, different points to that. And we're not going to get into that so much right now. But the point is, we're seeing this happen right in front of us. We're used to walking through grocery stores and seeing grocery store shelves empty or spotted here and there. A little empty spot here, a little empty spot there. This is something that, again, is not going away. And it looks very much like a lot of this is manufactured. It's being manipulated. And we are paying the price for it. What do we do about these things? Do we just sit back? You know, we know these things are happening. Do we just sit back and say, well, this is what's happening. I guess we just have to accept the way it is. Or do we realize, you know what? We play a part in what happens to ourselves. We really need to be our own first responders. Now, obviously, we put everything in God's hands. We trust everything to God. God will reveal to us. He will. We have to be confident, keep praying, keep trusting, keep moving forward, offer everything up, get holy, get strong. But God will reveal to us what his plan is when it comes to everything that we're struggling with, anything that we are battling, anything that our hearts are torn up over. And part of that is the shortage issue. People are concerned about this, understandably, very concerned about it. So we want to be looking at the different things that we can do. Now, the workshop next week is going to be talking about this. The title of the workshop is Rooted. And what we're going to do is we're going to handle and look at all these different scenarios and what we can do to be better prepared, what steps we can take. We want to leave you with at least 15 concrete, actionable steps to really help put it in the right perspective and take those steps that are needed to, to deal with whatever's happening and what may come. You know, we don't know what's coming. We're talking about a God of the universe. He is the God of the impossible. He takes those things that look impossible and makes them possible. So again, we have to have confidence in God. We have to trust in God. He will reveal to us how, when, what things should be. 
And this is something when it comes to food shortages, fuel shortages, aluminum shortage, uh, fertilizer shortage, which is affecting crops, farmers everywhere. And then you have even neon. Now, what's the big deal about neon? You know, neon signs, you know, eat at Mel's, you know, cafe open, right? Uh, great steak shop open, right? Uh, yeah, the good steak, right? All right? These neon signs, not the only thing neon is used for. Neon is used for computer chips, right? The computer chips that are in maybe this microphone, the camera, the computer, you know, this nice, great light that I've got working here. These chips have everything to do with our civilization across the board. And this short supply of neon will affect that. It already has. That's why we see automobiles piled up, manufacturing plants, and we don't know when it's going to be taken care of. We don't know when it's going to when it's going to pass. So again, what do we do? We have to pray, be rooted in prayer, but then we also have to look at what we can do on a natural level. So we're going to get into that with the workshop. Again, brcoalition.com forward slash workshop. Go on out and check that out. But what we wanted to address in this is let's look at three real key things that show us that being prepared is very Catholic. It's a very Christian thing to do. I don't care what your denomination is, but the Catholic Church, it's clear. We have a responsibility to look at the corporal, the physical aspects of who we are. We're created that way. God has created us. Temple of the Holy Spirit. Maintain the temple. Like the shirt here. All right? All right? Looks nice, right? It used to not be my favorite shirt. Now it's one of my favorite shirts. But we have to look at the reality of being this temporal created being that God made us and take care of that. Be prepared to take care of that. And how do we do that? Well, we got to look at the basics first and foremost. And I want to I want to point out, I want to point out a couple key things that really show us in scripture in particular that the corporal aspects of who we are, the physical aspects of who we are, God is concerned about. He does care about. And he does want us to take care of those things and to help others as well. Go back to the Old Testament. It's one of my favorite examples. And the reason I bring this up is in part because there are people out there who will say, yeah, you know, Doug, I'm just going to pray, trust God, and he'll take care of everything. I do too. I trust him. But I also know that he wants me to play a part in that. So for example, if I've got to drive across town, I need to put gas in the car. I don't just pray over my car and expect gas to show up in the gas tank. I drive to the gas station and I actually pump the gas into the gas tank so that I can drive the car. If your child breaks his arm, you don't just pray, please God, fix my child's arm. You'll pray, please, Lord, let my child's arm heal. But then we take the child to the doctor, and the doctor, through ordinary means, sets the bone, takes care of the situation, and by the grace of God, the healing can occur, and the arm can be fixed. This is cooperating with God's grace. This is God's order of things, the ordinary means. So again, uh, I, I want to make sure that that we look at the this through the right eyes, that the church has always taught, Christianity has always taught, that it's not just sit back, it's pray, trust God, and then take the steps that we feel God is calling us to take. Go back to the Old Testament. We've got the famous Joseph, St. Joseph of the Old Testament. Joseph was not liked by his brothers. He's thrown into a well. His brothers eventually sell him into slavery. Brief version of the story. I know you are all aware of this. They throw him into the well. Then they take him out. They sell him into slavery. Long story short, he eventually ends up in Pharaoh's jail. Right? And Pharaoh's having these horrible dreams. And one of the dreams is seven fat cows, seven skinny cows, seven grains that are healthy, and then seven wimpy grains, uh, you know, corn, wheat grains of some sort. And in both cases, the skinny cows eat the fat cows, but they are not fulfilled. The weak, wimpy grain eats the healthy grain, but it doesn't change its stature at all. What does this mean? He's confused. His advisors cannot help him at all. Someone tells him, there's a man in jail. His name is Joseph. Joseph can interpret dreams. So they pull Joseph out of prison and he goes to Pharaoh. And in the conversation, eventually, Joseph tells Pharaoh, this is God speaking. You're going to have seven years of bountiful harvest. It's going to be magnificent. It's going to be great. But that's going to be followed by seven years of famine. This is a natural disaster, famine. Well, what do we do? They ask Joseph. You need to prepare. You need to take measures of grain from each of the harvests of the seven years of plenty and bounty and store it up so that when the seven years of famine hit, you have grain to live off of. And other things too, I'm sure, were part of this equation. So 
Pharaoh puts Joseph in charge and Joseph starts to go throughout the land and he's taking measures of wheat. Now, scripture says that so much was taken that they couldn't even count it after a while. Now, in addition to that, by the miracle of God's grace, Joseph was given a wife. And this was seemed impossible, but God made it possible. So Joseph is now traveling throughout the land and he has his wife by his side and he's working in all these different regions of Egypt and they're collecting grain. And you know that they had to be collecting other things as well. Other items as well had to be put together, not to mention the storage bins to handle all the grain they were collecting. So all the preparation for seven years that took place to prepare for the seven years of famine. And when the seven years of famine hit, it is stated in scripture that people came from all over Egypt, outside of Egypt, all the provinces. One translation actually says from all over the world. And they came to Joseph. They went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh would say, Ite ad Joseph, which means go to Joseph. Joseph helps make the impossible possible. And through this reveals to the people how God is going to unfold this miracle and make this so. Anyway, it's important for us to realize that's in Scripture. Now fast forward to the New Testament, and we have Jesus talking in Matthew chapter 25. He says, when the Son of Man comes in the glory of all of his angels, he will sit upon the throne and assemble all the nations before him. This is the final judgment. We're all going to be faced with this. And in this final judgment, he separates the sheep from the goats. And he says to the goats, you're going to hell. Now, this is the quick version of it, of course. And he says to the sheep, you're going to heaven. Why? This is the question. Why? Why hell and why heaven? He says, because when you saw me hungry, you gave me food. When you saw me thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was naked, you clothed me and you sheltered me. And all these corporal works of mercy. The Catholic faith teaches seven corporal works of mercy are important. Feed the hungry, you drink to the thirsty. Clothe the naked, shelter the homeless. Care for the sick, visit the imprisoned, and bury the dead. These are physical actions that are important because it cares for other people. Now, when did we see you hungry and and not give you or and give you food? Or the goats would say, when do we see you hungry and not give you food? Because that's why they're in trouble because they didn't do it. The sheep did it, the goats didn't. And Jesus says, when you did it or didn't do it, to the least of my brothers. Each of us, when we care for each other, not just care for someone's heart tenderly, gently, but care for someone's stomach, <laughs> feed them. Help them, give them food and water. So yes, we have to, we have to, we have to do it all. Corporal and spiritual works of mercy. This is critical to who we are as Catholics, especially. But all Christians should be looking at this. It's a practical thing too, if you think about it. It keeps society healthy and strong when people are working on preparing for any kind of crisis or problem because you keep people sustained. And when people get desperate in a crisis, they will do. They will do desperate things, and sometimes it can become very bad, and sometimes they will cooperate with evil. So again, we're talking about really taking not just scriptural points, but common sense when it comes to feeding and giving drink and shelter and all these pieces of the puzzle. So when we see, you know, talk of shortages and all this going on about... One second here. <clears throat> all right. Something in the voice there, something in the throat. When we see all this going on, <clears throat> pardon me, in the world of shortages and so forth, what's our response? Is it run for the hills? Is it hunker down? Are we thinking, yes, we need to take steps to be prepared ourselves, but we also need to be thinking about the people. We also need to be looking at the fact that we have in Scripture these points, obviously, of caring for the body and the soul, both. But then we also have in the teachings of the faith the responsibility to protect and defend each other. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, I want to focus on three particular paragraphs. Paragraph 2263, 2264, and 2265. In each of these three paragraphs of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it speaks about defense, self-defense. It speaks to the point that we have the responsibility to protect and defend. And as St. Thomas Aquinas, who is a footnote quoted in one of these paragraphs, when you are confronted with an aggressor, someone who's threatening to harm you, there are many people who have said, and I've heard this all over the country, well, I'm just going to let him take my life. I'll die a martyr. Not always the case. You don't die a martyr unless a couple of key things are in place. One, they have to be trying to kill you or kill you because they hate what you stand for as a Christian. Right? Martyr means witness. So if you're not, if, if, if it's not a situation where you know you're witnessing to the faith and that's why they hate you, then that removes that qualification for it to be true martyrdom. And the other piece of the puzzle is you. You have to have no escape, really. God basically closes the doors 
in this situation is set before you, and then God's grace will be there. We hope and pray we will cooperate with it and so forth. But let's let's do what we can, as St. Thomas More says, to use our wits to survive. And then if God closes the doors, as St. Thomas More says, that we die like champions. But until then, let's look at the reality that God has called us to protect and defend other people as well. It's in the Catechism. Paragraph 2265 specifically states that even if you have to take up arms against an aggressor, and even if it means the loss of the aggressor's life, then it is morally justified. As long as the intention is not to take the life, meaning that I'm applying a type of force that is to stop the threat and the cause, and, and then it causes the loss of life, as opposed to, you know, you called me a name, I didn't like that, I want to kill you. That, that's not right. That is not the right way to do it. Now, consider this too. St. John Paul II writes about this in his book, The Gospel of Life, where he states, quotes paragraph 2265, and states that even if the aggressor doesn't know what they're doing, eh, mental disorder or you know, maybe they're possessed, or maybe there is a situation where, you know, they're on drugs or they're high of some sort of alcohol. If they don't know what they're doing, but they're still threatening in such a way that it can cause a loss of life and you have to apply a certain degree of force in order to stop the threat. And that, you know, not intentionally ends up causing the loss of their life. It's morally justified. St. John Paul II writes that. Now, these are pieces of being prepared though. So when we're talking about food shortages, gas shortages, fuel fertilizer, aluminum, neon, all these types of things, we have to really consider that the consequences of this getting worse could turn society really upside down. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to why it's going on. I have my opinions. I've talked about this. And not really opinions. I don't like to look at just opinions, but things that you see, signs of the times, things that are said by government officials and in this country and in other countries, and you start to scratch your head and realize, you know what? There's something going on behind the scenes here. There's some manipulation here going on. We need to be making sure that we're doing the best, of our, the best of our ability. We need to be turning to God, deepening our prayer, first and foremost. Be rooted in a relationship with God. Get that daily rosary in. You know, Make sure you, you, you've got that scapular close to you at all times. Wear it close to the heart, right there. Keep that scapular close. It means a lot. Right? It's a connection. It's a connection with the Blessed Mother, it's a connection with Christ. It's also a connection with, with other people in this world, people that we care about, people that we love. So keep that scapula close by. Keep that rosary in your hand. Know that this is a great, powerful weapons that God gives us to fight in this battle. And give us confidence. Give us confidence that we're loved. Confidence that someone out there really does care. Otherwise, we wouldn't have these great weapons, these great instruments from heaven given to us. From there actionable steps from the deep prayer actionable steps with confidence with boldness with courage with trust with patience knowing that god will reveal to us what we need to be doing and when and how there's a lot that can happen very quickly it's very easy for us to see these things trickle the way they do they trickle down in the news we hear a new report here a new report there a new report came out yesterday in fact yesterday or the day before i heard it yesterday but it was a report that said that Iran is working on setting up nuclear devices on a satellite to launch over the U.S. to detonate and cause an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, which could, if it's done in the right way and they accomplish it, it could literally shut down a good portion or a fair amount, really, of our power grid in the United States. Now, this isn't something to be terrified of, but it is something to realize, yeah, there are people out there that will cooperate with with evil to try to do a lot of harm. There's an old saying from an old Batman movie. Some people just want to watch the world burn. And there are people out there who have new world order plans, great reset plans. And so with, with whatever is happening, however it's unfolding, and we're not sure exactly what it all is, we do still have a responsibility to take the steps to be better prepared for ourselves and for our loved ones to the best of our ability. And then again, to trust the rest to God. I do want to say this because this is a question that comes to me a lot. Doug, how much? How much food? How much water should I store up? You know, how much when it comes to medical or self-defense? You know, what, what's the line? What's the limit? Where do, I, where do I cut it off? And I always say, I don't know. You have to pray. I have to pray. We all have to determine whether or not we feel God is calling us to do this much or this much. Some of us feel like we've really got to, we've really got to max it out, really fill up the, the storage bins, right? And then others who feel like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm right here. 
If we're not in prayer about it, we're not going to hear that though. And so it's important for us to be thinking, if I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to get five cans of soup, just get a couple extra cans of soup. Some people feel like they're going to get an extra case of soup. But again, pray about it and let the Holy Spirit guide. Trust the Holy Spirit. He will reveal. He will. He's faithful. And turn to Our Lady. She will help too. Today, May 13th, is the anniversary of the first apparition in Fatima. This is my statue of Our Lady of Fatima. I love this statue. I love bringing the Blessed Mother into everything that we're talking about, everything that we're doing. She warned in Fatima that there would be a second world war. She And it happened 21 years or so later, it began. And then she also warned of the error of Russia's ways, communist government, godlessness, all kinds of immorality, just turning the world upside down with state-run government, the whole nine yards, all of it. Everything that she has warned and cautioned has happened. Now, here we are hearing about the war in Ukraine and people are concerned, people are afraid. What do I do? Where do I go? How do I handle these things? Continue to pray, continue to prepare, body, mind, soul, and let God reveal. He will. Now, again, this can be overwhelming at times. And there are times I feel it too. So I want to share this thought with you. When you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling, I would say you're sitting on the edge of your bed, literally or figuratively, and you've got your face buried in your hands, and you're thinking, Lord, this situation seems so hard. It's so impossible. What do I do? I would say, when you hear God be somewhat, or I'm sorry, when you, when you sense that God is somewhat strangely silent, I heard a man say that to me one time years ago. He said, yeah, when I pray, Doug, sometimes, he was an older gentleman, he says, sometimes God is strangely silent. And, oh, Trisha chimes in here, the whole week you felt overwhelmed. Exactly, Trisha. Um, we are in a position where we are being tested really extensively, but Father Chad Ripperger, we had him on our podcast, U.S. Grace Force podcast, a few weeks back, about a month or so ago, maybe by now. And we asked him about what's going on in the world, and he said he is seeing Catholics be tested in ways he'd never seen. But he said it's God preparing us for the next level of what's unfolding. And he said, you know, we're going to get through this if we remain faithful. So when those moments hit where you feel overwhelmed and you're not sure, just again, take a deep breath. Put your heart in the heart of our Lord, the heart your heart in the heart of Our Lady, and you know, dwell on, if you will, the love that you know others have for you. That's an important thing to remember too. Even if you're not close to them, you know, know that the you know that if that love is there, let that strengthen you as well. Let it be something where you recognize that love is the root of all of this. Why prepare? Out of love. We prepare out of love for God, love for one another. You know, we take the steps to be ready to help each other where we can. But it's important to realize that this has a very Catholic perspective to it, a very clear Catholic lens to look through when it comes to these things. Because we are being confronted with some very difficult times. When you watch the news, be careful about that. Don't let it consume you. Watch the news with the idea that, okay, I'm going to see what's going on. Be aware of what's going on. When the time's right, I'm shutting it off. And then go do whatever you need to do to kind of find that balance, that peace, that prayer, that joy. Joy. No matter what the trial no matter what the torment is you're going through, joy. Seek the joy. How do we find it? It's hard sometimes. You turn to God. You try to trust. You rely on the love of others. You, you keep that rosary wrapped around your hand. Again, that scapular close to your heart. And you keep moving forward, striving for a deep joy, knowing that God is in a position to reveal and change and move pieces around the chessboard very quickly. Just be ready to be moved because it can happen like that. So keep that, that, that chin up, keep that joy up, keep that prayer going, but then start taking steps. One of the steps you can do is go out to brcoalition.com forward slash workshop, sign up for the workshop next week. We have just, we have room left on Wednesday and we'd love to have you out there. Love to have you be part of it uh, and share the information with others. Let others know about this. You and I both know that there are people out there. We know them who aren't taking steps to be prepared. They're not doing anything. They're not getting any extra water, any extra food. Uh, they're, they're not so worried. They just think it's all going to eventually work out. You know, Lately, gas prices have even jumped again. So we have to be aware that these things are fluctuating and it's getting a little crazier every day. And when the Roe v. Wade thing came down last week, a lot of people just thought, well, that's great. I was one, and I know several others who thought, oh, we're going to get some retaliation from the enemy. And we have been seeing that, haven't we? 
So we have to realize that there is a diabolical aspect of things that are going on right now. We need to look at these things through the Catholic view, through that view of faith and prayer, and have confidence. Just have confidence in God that he will reveal. He will show us what he wants and when he wants it. All right, I'm going to hit a couple of comments here. we got a lot that have been chiming in. I love it. Good to hear you all out there. Let's see here. Hello from South Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, thank you so much for putting this together. God bless you and your families via the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Amen. Thank you very much, Mary, for that. Uh, Jenny Attico, New Jersey. Anne's checking in from New Jersey. Magdalene of Divine Love. Hi from Richmond, Virginia. Good to hear from you, Magdalene. I think we, you were on recently as well. Good to have you out there again. Knoxville, Tennessee. Amanda, good to hear from you. Let's see here. Trisha Richmond, also hi. Uh, Magdalene, divine love, good. Amanda, faith and reason. Amen, Amanda. That's the way to look at it. St. John Paul II wrote about that, faith and reason. We have faith, but we have the reasonable side, the common sense side. You know, And God wants us to be part of that. So yeah, faith and reason. They go well together. They work very well together. Okay, Trisha, I was at St. Michael and Glen Allen, but have moved way south, need to find a new parish. We'll pray for you, Tricia. You can do it. Uh, let's see here. Moving down here. Remember, St. Joseph Parish, Southside, FSSP. Come join us. Nice. Okay. Um, Trisha, of course, so check it out. Magdalene, I love when you all communicate with each other. This is what's great about the technology, interaction with each other from all parts of the world. And we did a live uh, a couple of days ago. We had three people from Ireland. Got to mention the Ireland and my good friend, St. Patrick. Yes, he and I are close buddies. So he's interceding, working hard, St. Patrick. Okay, let's see here. Fear and anxiety are not from God. Being prudent is a skill God gave us, says Tara. Make lists and have a plan. Doing this, curta doing this curtail is doing this to curtail the anxiety. I got that. Visit the Blessed Sacrament and sit with them. I like that idea, especially sitting with the Blessed Sacrament. I try to do that, just pop in, go for the Blessed Sacrament, light a votive candle, right? Light that votive candle. And sit for the Blessed Sacrament and just offer prayers and just beg God for guidance and direction. All right. Please, Lord, reveal. You will, I'm sure. And remember that the fear and anxiety part, um, it isn't from God. Um, I would say a healthy fear can be, what I mean by that is a motivating factor. It's kind of like when your child's running in front of a car in the street. There's a healthy fear that motivates you to get up, run, and grab your kid and pull them out of the way. So there's a healthy fear, motivating type of fear, but not a paralyzing fear. The paralyzing fear is from the enemy. The enemy wants us locked up, curled up in the fetal position, and just afraid or unhappy or sad, don't want to do anything, overwhelmed, consumed by the, by the threats and the concerns of the world. That's not from God. The Holy Spirit wants to move us to a motivating factor. Motivating factor that says, I need to get busy, or else there are consequences if I don't. Thus, you go back to the Old Testament again, St. Joseph of the Old Testament talking to Pharaoh, saying, look, if we don't do something, you have a lot of starvation on your hands, a lot. So we need to start storing up grain. Otherwise, the consequence, and it's, it's a healthy dose of fear, is starvation. So it's important to put it in the right perspective. I'm glad you brought that up because that's an important thing to talk about. Paralyzing anxiety and fear is not from God. Motivating. So we take the right steps in the right order with a sense of peace. You could have that motivating sense of fear with peace. It says, I know I need to get this done, right? I know I need to get this done. The fire breaks out at night and I hear that smoke detector go off. I know I got to get moving, right? It's a motivating factor. It's a motivating fear. All right, greetings from Oregon. This says, uh, thank you for putting together this information. You are very welcome. We hope and pray it will help because the most important thing is that we reach out and do the best we can to honor God and seek his will. But also in that, we want to help people be encouraged, right? I don't want anybody afraid. I mean, I feel the overwhelming, trust me, I'm not sleeping like I used to, all right? This last 10, 11 days have been a bit challenging when it comes to trying to sleep at night. But, you know, last couple of weeks, you, know, you go back and you look at the, the, the situation that we've seen unfold and it just really, it really can throw you for a loop. Keep praying. So when I can't sleep, I pray. I just get back to prayer, all right? And let God bring that sense of peace. Okay, let's see here. Hello from down under Australia. Hello, mate. I, I do a terrible Australian accent. I'm not even going to try, but good to have you on here. Um, um, oh, Mirajam? Did we get that right? Mirajam? I hope I got that right. I hope I didn't slide your name. Forgive me. But good to have you with us there. Doug, we need direction, and thanks for spreading the faith. I'm from Luxembourg. Delice? Delcy? Not sure if I pronounced it right. Forgive me if I, if I pronounce it wrong. But, uh, you know, this is, this is, that's, that's a really good point. 
we are we all need it. We all need help and direction and guidance. We all do. We've been studying this stuff for years, working on this for years. That's why we offer the workshop. That's why we offer what we do through brcoalition.com. We want people to be able to be trained, body, mind, and soul, and get yourself prepared for whatever may come your way, whether it's self-defense situation, if you're walking through a parking lot, you know, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you're a real estate agent and you're out there showing a house and you got to be ready just in case, right? Keep that pepper spray close by, you know, a little flashlight in your hand, a tactical flashlight, you know, I got to get the flashlight out. Okay. Always got to show the flashlight. Tactical flashlight, 500 lumen. If you have one of these, ah, it's a great little weapon, great little tool. It can be used as a weapon, but it can also be used as a tactical light. But when you've got these things on hand and you're, you're thinking, you're prepared, it's important. So being hopefully trained and, and uh, the instruction we're trying to offer so people can be in better shape for that stuff. That's what we want. We want you to be able to go through life confident. Don't go through life like a, like a target or a victim. Go through life like you're a child of God. You're a child of God and no one should be touching you. Only and if God allows it to get to that point. Again, like Thomas More said, if he closes the doors, then we die like a champion. But in general, we hope to pray and hope and pray to be able to give good instruction, good direction on these things. So I hope it's helping. Let's see, Brat Mom. Uh, I've been stocking up a little at a time, rotating my supplies, which is good. Pay attention to your dates so you don't waste food and such. From Luxembourg. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I combined two messages there. These are scary times. I'm old. Brat's mom. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged by one of my heroes. Oh, 1565, the siege of Malta where you had about 800 Maltese knights defending the island of Malta against roughly 50,000 uh, Muslim Turks. They wanted to overrun Malta so they could use it as a staging ground to move into the rest of Europe and destroy Catholicism throughout Europe. Now, the head of the Knights of Malta was a man named Grandmaster Jean Lavalette. He engaged in battle. He was out there swinging away on the battlefield. He was en engaged in the fight. He was 72 years old. So even in later years, we can we can take the steps. You could be 95. Jack LaLanne was exercising the day he died. If you're old enough, you all know who Jack LaLanne is, was, is still, and hopefully with our Lord. He was 95, 96 years old, I think, when he died, 96. He was exercising the day he died. His quality of life was good. Why? Because he ate well. He exercised a lot. You know, I'm a big fan of, you know, certain supplements in particular. I love the super green food. I love it. I, I take a scoop or two a day myself. And the uh, red red kind of beet super red, red food it's powder right some of you are familiar with this uh if you have that take that it's good stuff at least one scoop a day you know and develop your health get stronger you know, no matter what your age is get stronger just do it in increments a little bit at a time you don't got to run into the gym i work out five six days a week you know usually even if it's a 10 minute workout i get something in you know sometimes it's just an intense stretching workout with some light weights and sometimes it's much more intense but I do it regularly because I want the longevity. I want, I don't know what's coming down the road. I don't know how fast God's going to change things, what he's going to reveal. I want to be ready. I want to be ready for anything, anyone that God introduces into my life down the road. We don't know what we're going to be up against. And we want to be prepared and have a good positive attitude as we do. So it doesn't matter how old you are, Brad's mom. Just take the right steps, uh, eat the right foods, and uh, get a little bit of exercise in. Get yourself stronger and healthier. And it can be fantastic. Okay, a few more comments. I'm going to have to run here in about five minutes, five to seven minutes. I'm going to run to Mass tonight, uh, the anniversary of the first apparition of Fatima. I'm going to go to Mass. So I'll be praying for you all. But before I go, let's get through a few more comments here. Let's see here. Uh, my husband and I live in Central Texas and drive to Fort Worth, two and a half hours one way, every weekend to attend the Latin Mass. It's worth every minute. That's great, Monica. Uh, Central Texas. I'm in East Texas, so go to talk to a fellow Texan there. Let's see. Um, Tara, if someone is having difficulty with anxiety, perhaps this is a sign of an underlying disorder. If this is the case, an individual needs to talk in a community and may need more active prayer life. Yeah, Tara, there's a number of things that anxiety can stem from. It can be, you know, you know just day-to-day -day struggles. There can be something deeper emotionally, mentally. Yes, um, it can be. There can be some spiritual aspect to it as well. Uh, so we try to check all the boxes. And as Father Chad Ripper says, who deals, he's an exorcist. He says, you start with the natural pieces. Uh, get yourself healthier, get yourself stronger. Anxiety can actually be helped with a better diet and exercise. That is a fact. That is a fact. I know there are people out there who want to rely on the spiritual only. I'm just going to keep praying and God will fix it. That's important. No question. But oftentimes God says, look, I work the ordinary means. I've told this story. I'll tell it. I'll tell it again. Quick version for sake of time here. I was driving across the state of Nebraska years ago. I had to give a presentation at a church. 
and I pulled up and I had some, some people who worked for me at the time. So they're unloading the van and the trailer. And I went up to the priest, introduced myself. Hello, father. I'm Doug. Good to meet you. Oh, good to meet you. I said, father, I got a terrible headache. And I was half joking when I said, do you have any special prayers or blessings to help with my headache? Maybe a healing of some sort. And he stopped and he put his head down kind of like this. And he started to pray and closed his eyes. And my thought was, oh, he's got something. He's going to do something here. This is great. Then he looked at me and he said, yes, God is speaking to me. He says, you need to take an aspirin. He says, God works the ordinary means, Doug. That's really the first time I really heard it clearly. So uh, with anxiety as well, though, we, let's look at the ordinary aspects first. Let's try to take care of the health. Let's work from there. And then, of course, you, you know, there's different layers you can look into from there. But it's a great point for bringing it up, Tara. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Brad says, thank you, Doug. You make me feel better. You give me courage. Oh, I hope Brad's mom. I hope so. That's the goal here is to encourage you all to know that number one, you're not alone, right? Keep that scapula right there close to the heart. You are not alone, right? And just keep focusing on taking the right steps. Turn to our lady, turn, keep that rosary in your hand, you know, and turn to our lady, turn to our Lord and keep moving forward. Keep those words in your head. Keep moving forward. God wants us to keep moving forward no matter what the trial is. He wants us to find a sense of joy. You think of St. Lawrence strung out over the fire being martyred. And at one point he says to the guard, this is true, true story. All right. Some of you know the story. St. Lawrence turns to the guard and he says, you can turn me over now. I'm done on this side. He was being hung up like a barbecue, all right, over a fire. They're cooking him to death. And he actually says, you can turn me over now. I'm done on this side. The Holy Spirit, talk about an amazing sense of humor in the time of the most severe crisis. Now, I like to add to that, I think when he stood before the gates of heaven, Jesus came to him to meet him and said, well done, my good and faithful servant. <laughs> I hope you're laughing at that. Okay, I hope St. Lawrence is laughing at that joke. Okay, get it? He was fire, well done. Okay, anyway, I hope to encourage you. That's the goal. Encourage, feel stronger about things and not lose hope. And remember that God does have a plan. He will reveal. We just need to keep praying and moving forward and trust, 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 trust. And, and God will work. He will. He'll make it happen. Let's see here. Oh, do, do, do. Uh, Mary Sean, many people in the U.S. don't want to know either. Uh, let's pray that their eyes are open. A lot of people are blind to what's going on. They really are. It's, it's bouncing right off them. They don't want to listen. They don't want to pay attention. They don't want to take the steps. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's move it down. Talk to your guardian angel. He's ready and trying to help you and everything. That's absolutely true. Great point as well. Bring the angels into the situation. Send your angels to others. Send your angels to those that you love. That's a great thing to do too. Total Gym is a great exercise tool. Steve Muller, way to go. I like that. Get yourself some equipment. If you don't have equipment, you can use body weight. You can do push-ups, jumping jacks. You can do push-ups on a countertop in a kitchen. All kinds of ways you can exercise. You can do shoulder press with cans of peaches. If they're heavy cans, you get a little more work out of it. Depending on your level, where you are, there's all these things that you can do to be exercising and keep yourself healthy and strong. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Tara's checking in from Alaska. That's where Tara is actually coming from. All right. And Tamarack, Florida. Denise is checking in from Tamarack, Florida. Florida. I love the state of Florida. I really do. Okay, uh, we're getting close to wrapping up here. I got to wrap up at 40 minutes here, and that's in about a minute and a half or so. So I'm going to start bringing this down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, go on out, brcoalition.com forward slash workshop. I know that's fast. brcoalition.com forward slash workshop. You can scroll to the top of this chat box. There's the link right there. Go on out if you have not done this yet and sign up for one of the workshops on Wednesday, May 18th, 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock Central Time. Really encourage you to do this. They're free. We're going to be working through, again, 15 main steps to help you be better prepared and handle much, much better the shortages that we see coming and that we're hearing are going to get worse. So I really encourage you to go sign up out there, brcoalition.com forward slash workshop, and get yourself in a position where you can be better prepared for yourself and for your loved ones, okay? Remember, it's never enough, never enough, just to sit back and hope it gets better. It's important that we take the right steps and move forward. Trust in God. He will reveal to us. Call on your saints, like I call on St. Patrick's intercession. I got my Ireland hat on here. Call on the saints, call on the angels, and keep the rosary tight in your hand, scapula around your neck or close to your heart, and know that we are children of God, and he wants the best for us. We just want to give the best to one another. Okay. All right, I'm going to let you go here. It's been great being with you. Went fast. 40 minutes went fast. 
All right. God bless and strengthen you all in this fight. Never lay your sword down on the battlefield and walk away. There's far too much at stake. Remember, hope is found when you have a plan of action in the face of a crisis. And that's what we want to help you with, with the workshop uh, coming up next week. And just in general, we want to help. So pray for us. You, you will be in our prayers. And God bless you. We'll see you again soon.